Okay, working on a new piece. It's just going to be an Indian bust with a bear claw necklace. Now, a friend of mine said that he tried it once before of carving the teeth as part of the main body and it just didn't work out so well. So I thought, well, maybe while I'm in the process of doing this, I'll just stop here for a minute and we'll make a short video of how I do it. Here on uh, Black Buffalo here is uh, one I did several years back where I put uh, the teeth on the necklace. This is a little more uh, elaborate necklace than what we're going to have on this fella here. But uh, it's basically the same method. Okay, and the best thing uh, you can do before you start is do a little research and find some photographs of uh, bear claw necklace. And even better, find photographs of Native Americans wearing one so you can see exactly uh, what it's going to look like. So, I've got my, I've started carving my teeth here. This is going to take about 18 teeth around here. I uh, cut out my blanks, little blanks here on the bandsaw of the size of each one. I've carved, I think I've got about 16 teeth here at the moment. Uh, the body is fairly well roughed out here. Well, actually, the body is pretty well complete. It just needs some burning now and a little texturing up here on the fur. When uh, laying out your teeth, you know, here's where one of these little dividers really comes in handy because you can uh, just find your center point here and measure over to your next position, which is right there, and just, you know, just like a navigator, you know, just kind of rotate this thing around as you go around your necklace and find the other spots for where the teeth will go. And that's what I've done all around his, uh, the fur. Okay? Simple. And carving the teeth, it's really quite quick. As I say, I've cut these all out to the length that I want. And cut out some little blanks. These are about Just about a quarter inch, I guess. And the grain runs this way, or that way, either way. Does not run up and down. Okay, so get your knife, figure out which end you want the end of the tooth, like right here, they will say this is the end of the tooth. And then we're going to just cut down to the point, just like that. Okay, and then turn it around and go the opposite direction to uh, get the next shape, just like that. See there, we've pretty well done it. Now it's just a matter of rounding off the edges, and if you remember which way the grain's going, this becomes really simple. That's another thing you have to remember. Remember, I think I've said this before when I make videos, no matter see how your knife follows the wood there? Well, if you turn it around and carve this way, see how the wood comes off? That's, that's what you always have to remember. If people would learn the grain and how it affects your whittling, you know, that your carving is going to be 99.9% .9 easier. All right, we've got this side we'll round it off there, so now we'll round off the back. And then we're 
just kind of do that. Just look at it, make sure we've got all the corners. Just add that one to the to the pile there. I'm going to take off just a little more here. How many does that give me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So I need two more. So let me just knock another one out here real quick. Again, start there at the back and just carve down. And turn it around. It's kind of hard to hold there with my gloved hand, but better have a gloved hand than a cut hand. Carve down that way. You get that shape like that there, and then it's a matter of rounding off the corners. Cut a bunch of extra blanks so you, as you put the thing together, you're going to find that some teeth, just for some strange reason, just won't work out like this one. All right, just lay that one up there. But what you try to do is you try to get them all uniform. Now here's one here that I'll probably toss. I toss that one there. But we'll just see as we move along. So, now that we've got our teeth done, let me just take a couple here. And we'll go over to the flap sander and get these sanded smooth. There's a little hair hanging off of there. I'm probably all looking at this mess on my sleeve here. That's not where I wipe my nose. That's just some old, uh, some of that expandable foam that I got on my shirt when I was sealing some stuff up. So anyway, let's go over to the flap okay, sander. Okay, now, here's the flap sander. This is one of the beauties of this little device here. Because you can sand these real dinky little things pretty easily with this. And it's not, you know, I'm going to end up sticking my fingers right down in that sander. And it's not going to hurt anything. It might clean my fingers up a little bit. That's all right. See that gets it nice and smooth. And another 
thing with this is ideally you want these little fingers to come out here and fuzz out like that because if you uh, run out some more paper and cut it straight across you know about a quarter or half an inch away from the end of your brushes here and then start you're going to have some really pretty strong uh, abrasive on these fingers and it's going to take that down real quick and you don't have any control over it so uh, I always when I put a new New, uh, new one in there. I always take that old scrap piece of wood and just hold it to that thing to bust all that stuff up to where I get the texture uh, of the thing that I want. Go. I do one more. say it doesn't, oops, just dropped my tooth. Doesn't take long at all to do it like this, okay? So now we're going to go back over to the uh, work table. Okay, Judy says you can't really see the difference. Well, you can too. Here's the four that I just did, and here's two that haven't been done yet. So you still got those rough edges on them. These you can still see the chip. You know, it's got a smooth edge on it, but the chip's still there. Uh, and that's what I want. So you just lock this end in here. All these chips are still there, but uh, it's it's smooth now to the touch. We, the only thing we've lost is the rough edge. Okay, the next step now, assuming we got it, these all sanded and everything, is to uh, texture the uh, the buffalo hair or bear, bear skin, excuse me. Buffalo don't have claws. Well, they do actually, but hoofs. Uh, we want to texture this here. And I'm going to go over to my other station over there and uh, start that process. Okay, to do this, I'm using uh, just my Dremel here and I've got me a little stone here. It's got sort of a, it's not a sharp point, but it's a pointed stone here and it'll make a mark on here and when I'm doing this you'll see also that I've roughed up uh, the surface of this so it's not uneven so it's not even <laughs> excuse me and uh, this will help when you you know makes it look more realistic like that and also when I'm doing this I want to remember to do it in the direction that the fur would lay which it's going to be like this. Pretty simple in this thing here. I'm not going to be able to do things completely here, but I'll do about 90% of it. What I'm doing is, is I'm not laying the thing on there and going like this. I'm pounding it. She's sort of pounding it. I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way around here and then we'll go on to the next step, okay? Okay, I've gone all the way around this and uh, you know where you go over, don't worry about that, you can easily carve those things off. Uh, as you notice, if you look at it real close, it's got a lot of fuzz done in here. Now you can take one, this is a paint, paint uh, cleaning tool here, just a brass brush. You can go along here like this and brush out a lot of that, but there's an easier way to do it. Get you a butane torch. It's 
See those little sparks? That's all that fuzz burning out of there. Be careful not to burn your finger. I've done that before. That pretty well takes care of all of it. Yeah. Somewhere over here I have a finer glass brush. Just a little soldering brush here. And you can just go go over it. And that flame also kind of sanded it by getting rid of the sharp edges of the uh, stone wheel. Don't worry about it getting dirty. It'll be clean by the time you get ready to paint it. Okay, one more thing to do, and then we'll be finished with this. Okay, now we got the thing pretty well done, but as you'll notice down in here where the uh, stoning wheel couldn't get down into these crevices, or lower part, front and back, just take your burning pin and uh, just kind of Go around it and burn in that detail. Take that up. It's just like burning a feather or something like that, you know, kind of take your strokes and Run them back up into the other. So they look part of it. Same goes for here. strokes and then deep stroke and just something to uh, you know you don't want it, everything to be uniform you want it to look like fur just continue doing that all the way around it okay and like I say these areas that you know you kind of overshot with a stone wheel they're not going to be deep enough that you can't carve them off real quick. Of course you'll have to get your divider and go back and establish your uh, positions of where you're going to put the feathers, okay? And once you get everything finished and we take it back to the sanding wheel for its final sanding, after we burn all our beading and everything else, it will be cleaned up again. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video, and next video we'll be probably uh, fixing this to add the teeth to it. Alright, so until then I'll talk to you later.